Wouldn't it be great if you could control all the player assets from one dropdown? Today, I want to introduce you to the drop down menu. Now, when we apply the drop down menu, it actually doesn't do anything, and we need to use some expressions to get it to do some work for us. And ultimately, our goal here in using the drop down menu is to make our life easier. We want to tie together a couple of different areas so that it's all controlled by one single element the drop down menu. I'm actually going to show you two different ways that we can use the drop down menu. The first way is by using it with images and tying our opacity to the drop down menu so that when we select a certain player that that player's image appears. The second way is going to be a little bit more advanced. We're going to use an array to call out the player's name that matches the order of the drop down menus. So here we are back in our stat graphic tutorial series and we're gonna take this and simplify it down to try and help tie things together. And the way that we're gonna do that is by using this effect, expression controls and drop down menu. Now you'll notice when you add this drop down menu, it actually doesn't do anything. You have these items here that you can edit and without having anything tied to it, it doesn't actually do anything. So we need to make this work for us. So the way that I'm gonna do this is by using it for photos. And remember, we also have the name background here that I wanna, um, that I wanna affect. So it'll be player name Phil and player name Stroke that we can go in and adjust. Once we tie it all back to this drop-down menu control, we never have to go back into these player name Phil and Stroke or the player images cutouts because it's all going to be controlled by one drop down. So we're making your life easy. Let's go ahead and jump in and figure out how we can make this happen. So the way I usually like to set this up is by going in my primary comp and adding the drop down menu to my controller within that comp. I'm just going to move it to the top too. So let's hop into the cutouts and I will show you what we've done. So I've added all of the all-star starters into this comp with a cutout here. And you'll see that I actually added a black and white filter in the level filter. And if I hit tab and go back to Artboard 4, I actually had these effects on the pre-comp. But since all of these images were shot in different locations with different lighting, uh, different looks. They're not similar enough to make that happen. Um, so if I was doing this for a team, I would use the exact same image and style for every single player. And that makes life a little bit easier so you can, you can leave those effects on the pre-comp. But since that didn't happen, I already went ahead and applied the black and white and the levels effects on each player and set them. Another thing I did, you'll notice I have some rulers here. In order to try and make sure that I maintain the same look and feel uh, for every single player, I like where she's falling here. So I went ahead and put one of them across her eyes and the other one right between her eyes. So this allows me to make sure that those eyes fall in about the same spot for every single player, which makes life easier uh, when I get out to the primary comp, so I don't have to worry about adjusting. And this kind of allows me to set it and leave it and not have to worry about it. So you'll see that with all these players, their eyes are, in fact, on the ruler or pretty darn close to that ruler. OK. So let's get into how we work with this drop down menu control. So I'm going to go ahead and lock this effect control panel here at the top of my primary comp. And I'm going to go into the Parker cutout. So effectively, this drop down menu, if I go up in here and hit edit, we have 10 players. So we can hit the plus button to get to 10 players. And I'm going to leave these as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, because effectively, that is exactly what these are. The number here on the left hand side is essentially what we're going to be trying to isolate. And I think that'll make sense here in just a second. So I'm going to hit OK to close out of this. 
within my Parker cutout, if I hit T to pull up my opacity and Alt click on the stopwatch to create an expression, we need to tie our opacity back to that drop down menu control. So let's start by creating a new variable and calling it player. And I'm going to pick whip back to the menu. And you can see here it says within the comp stat graphic tutorial series, which is that main comp, they're looking for layer controller, which is where we, we put this. It's on controller. And the effect of drop down menu control menu, which is exactly what I want. Now that we have that identified, we need to create what's called a conditional statement, which is an if else statement. And the way this is written is by saying if with a parentheses, and we're gonna call out this variable that we identified just above here. So if this player equals, which is two equal signs, and I'm gonna type in index here, and I'll explain this in a second. And then we're gonna use a curly bracket, which is the shift plus the left bracket. We'll get you the curly bracket. And we wanna say 100. And then we can say else, same thing, curly bracket and close it, zero. All right, so what this is saying is if the player, which is this drop down menu, equals the index, which I'm, the index of a number of a layer is over here, which in this instance would be 10. I want the, op the opacity, the property that I have this expression on, I want the property of, ex of opacity to be 100%. And if the player menu dropdown does not equal 10, I want my opacity to be zero. So if I click off, she's going to disappear. But if I go back to my drop down menu control and I go to 10, she's going to reappear. So all I'm saying here is hey, you only appear if the layer number here or the index is the same as the drop down menu control. If it's not, don't appear. All right. So now I can turn all of these on and they're all going to appear. And if I right click, copy expression only, and I command V to paste, they're all gonna disappear. Why? Because they're all following the same reasoning. If I switch to one, you're gonna get Asia Wilson. If I switch to six, you're gonna get a Gwumbake and Sabrina if I go to seven, right? All right, I think you get this gist. Now, this is, Super helpful. And if I go back to my if I go back to my main page here, I'm on seven. If I go to four, you see John Quell and back to Asia. So this is all fine and good, but what I find really helpful is naming these. So I wanted to leave these as numbers so you could get the, the relationship here between index and the layer number and your order of the list here. So I can actually edit these to be player names. One thing I do want to point out that is it's really important to make sure that what, whatever order you decide to go with here is the exact same order that you go with in your list item here. I actually want to move Park. Let's call this Candace Parker, right? Candace Parker. All right, let's move her up to three. So let's see if three, there we go. And make sure those are turned on. Great. So let me go back to my effects controller. Now that we have this order the way that we want it to be in, I'm gonna go ahead and click on edit, and we're just gonna change the names here. All right, now that I have that done, I can click okay, and you'll see that the names now appear, and you can just make sure that everything is exactly lined up with the proper player, and exactly what you'd expect, okay? So now when we go back out here, you're gonna see that this works, and now we need this, player image 
to be changed out as well. So I need to go find my Parker cutout. Okay, let's go back into project. And I hadn't pre-comped this one. So if I have Parker's cutout selected in my timeline and then I select Parker cutout up here and I hold Alter Option and click and drag and hover, I get that plus sign and once I release, it'll replace the cutout. And I really should call this something different. Now I can call this player cutout because I have more than just Candace Parker in there. So now within player cutout, if I go back to my effects controller, you can see players different. And it's going to mimic everything. Look at that cutout. Man, that was nice. Good job, me. Cool. So we have the player all set up now. What we need to do is I want to show you a different way to use this drop down menu control uh, because there's, there's a little bit more power to it. And I'm going to show you that through the player name text here. I'll show it to you on the fill and we'll just copy and paste it on the stroke. But actually, let me go back into my player cutout first, hit EE to pull up the expression. And I'm just going to copy this top section here because we want to reference that player variable the same way so that we know, doesn't matter which comp it's in, that we know that that's what we are targeting here. So I'm going to go into my first field here and under text, let's go ahead and alt click on the source text. And we're going to paste that variable that we pulled from the player cutout, which again is just pointing back to this drop down mini control. So this is the first name. And we need to create a new variable. And we're going to create an array. So in the last tutorial, Remember we talked about arrays as being a list essentially of different numbers. So an array is always enclosed in these brackets and it can be one, two, three, four, et cetera. So we need to create a new variable and insert the names of the players, first names of the players that we want this dropdown menu to call out. So let's call this player name just to keep things Simple, and then I'm going to hit the left bracket here, and it automatically adds a right bracket. So I'm just going to enter twice. And if I go up one with my up arrow key and I hit tab, this is going to allow me to see everything a little bit better. So let's go ahead and type Asia, comma. And the thing about text is this isn't going to work. If I, if I were to go to Asia's name, Nothing is going to change because, A, I haven't called it out at the bottom, but B, text needs to be read as what's called a string. So in order for us to fix that, we need to put quotes around her name. So it's read as a string of text, which is how all text is read with an After Effects. So now that we have our string, I'm adding comma, a comma at the end of the line because this is within the array, it's basically calling out that this is one object, comma, and then I can add another line in here. Let me click off of this because it's giving me an error for no reason. And I'm just going to go in this order. So I want Brianna, Candace, Jackie, comma at the end of that, Candace comma at the end of it, again, quotes, and then it gives me both of them, so I just need to type in between. All right, so with the last one, I don't need a comma at the end, and I'm just going to add my semicolon. We need to return the source to what the source text is looking for. So if we just return player name, you can see that it's just returning every single name that we have in the order. And that's not what we want. We want the same name for every single one. So just like how we call out a position, remember when we did the size? So I, I had dot size with the number zero in it, which basically said 
hey, give me this, give me the X, give me the first number of size. Well, we we want to do the same thing with the player name. And that is where this player comes in. Because remember, the player is the the drop-down menu control is just a list of numbers, one through ten. So we need to add the square brackets and type player in here because that will help us dynamically adjust the player's name, only one player, to be added for all the all the names. Okay, so now it says Brianna. And Brianna is actually the second name in our list. And Asia Wilson is the top one. So we don't have any names above this. Why is it not returning Asia? Arrays start with zero. Remember how I just did this, the dot size of zero, which referenced the first number? This does the exact same thing. So in order to get around this, there's a couple things I could do. I could go in here and add a blank, or I can go in here and change this to just have a blank up front with a comma. Because this starts at one, I want my first name that I need to also start at one, but an array starts at zero. So I'm just basically putting some dummy text in here to get around that. So when I click off now, you're gonna see it says Asia. Now we have one other thing to solve for. Now in the original, remember we had Candace laid out six or seven different times. Well, now that we have all this laid out in an array, we only see Asia's name listed here once per line. And we need it to repeat a number of times. So Asia is actually the perfect one to do this with because Sue is the only one that's just a short or maybe slightly shorter, and the rest are pretty long. So I think once we get this set up, we'll be in good shape for everybody else. So the way that we're gonna do this is by clicking here at the end, and we're gonna add a period and type repeat, and it's gonna automatically populate what we need to do. And within this, we're gonna say how many we want to repeat. So I'm just gonna type 15. So we want Asia's name to repeat 15 times in X. So let's click off. And that looks like just the link that we need for her name. There is one additional issue here that we can solve pretty easily as well. This is gonna bump everything up back to back to back. And what we need to do is go in to each of these and just add a space. Let me just click off so you can see what that does here. That just gives us that little space between the name so it doesn't all run together. So let's just go through each one of these names and quickly add a space to the end. If we click off, we'll be in good shape. Now we can just copy expression only. Let's head over to the stroke and within Candace, let's paste and we see it's updated to Asia. Fantastic. Now we just need to do the last name. So the way that we're gonna do this is go back into our fill, go down to Parker, and I'm gonna paste this as well. And then we can just go in and change the player's last name. So this updated appropriately. Let's check out some of the other names just to make sure that we nailed this 100%. Oh, hoo. baller. Now we need to copy this expression only. Head back over to stroke on the first Parker. Paste it. Nice. Double check it. It's working. And that's it.